Hey, and welcome to another Software Development with Matt Cast. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to manage database schema sources in the database tool that comes with PHP Storm. All right, let's get into it. Now, as you can see here, I've got a query open on the left, and that is connecting to a database that I already have integrated. Um, and here on the right, I have the database tool open. You can see the database that I've got integrated is just called not so interestingly database.sqlite because it is an SQLite database. However, let's show what it would be like to add or edit another one. Now I'll click this plus icon here and you can see here if I scroll down to data source that it lists all of the database vendors which are supported. So we can see SQLite at the top and we've got Amazon Redshift, Apache, Cassandra, Derby, Hive, Azure SQL Database. Um, these three or four here, I don't, I have never even heard of them. So I guess I'll have to do a bit of uh, searching on DuckDuckGo or whatnot to find out what they are. IBM DB2, MariaDB, Microsoft SQL Server, and so on. So let's just assume for argument's sake, I wanted to connect to a PostgreSQL database. So I'd click PostgreSQL. And then we load up the data sources and drivers window. Now you can see here that it gives a name for the database. And that's what you'll see if I move that over in the list here. We can add a comment such as, I don't know, maybe it's relevant to uh, the project that it's for, where it's hosted, something that's meaningful to you. And then we'll have five tabs, starting with the general tab. And you can see here, you know, the, your basic configuration features, which you would set anywhere, whether in code, whether in an environment file or whatnot. And you can see here, it'll provide the default host name and default port, then user and password, how long you want to save it, the password for that is, the database type, and that then works into a JDBC DSN string. If let's say that you get it right, you can then test the connection. This is something that I always do just to be sure because I'm just that kind of person to make sure it works. And that will then run a basic sort of, I think it's like a, a ping connection to make sure that you can connect with the database given all of the details and credentials that you've provided. Now, if we go over here, you can see some options. Now these of course vary based on each database because you, you know, you don't have one set of options that apply to every vendor. We can apply some SSH, SSH, SSL details. So if you're connecting over an SSH tunnel or you have an encrypted connection, we can look at the schemas tab nothing there at the moment because I haven't actually got anything that I can work with. I'll look at a live connection in just a moment and advanced. And I think this is setting um, database vendor specific properties for that connection. So um, I would actually don't, <laughs> don't have a data, a PostgreSQL database that I can work with. But something I do want to show you though, is because PHP Storm is a Java based application, it will use jar files to connect to each of the different database backends. By default, I think it only has the SQLite jar file downloaded and available. I think for most others, let's just do a little bit of a check. Yeah, it seems to be the case possibly my SQL, or I might have downloaded that before, but note as I click down through each one, it'll say the driver file highlighted in red, and it'll say download version and the particular version name. So that's actually what I find really, really handy is that you don't have to go out to, on the internet to find it and download it to a particular directory and reload PHP Storm and all that. All you do is you come into here and then you just click download version whatever for that particular database. So let's find one. What have we got here? Let's say MariaDB, because I want to connect to that. And I'm going to click download version 2.6.0. And you'll see here that it popped up. Actually, that moved a little too quickly. Let's do that again. Let's do say IBM DB2. I'm going to download that driver file. And you see here, oh man, this happens so quickly that all it does is just goes out and downloads the source, I think from the JetBrains website where it's, they, you know, they have a predefined list of uh, a predefined location where they can get the drivers for. 
So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and look at an existing connection. Ah, yes, that's one I already have. So it's, it's not as interesting because it's SQLite, because the options, I guess, aren't as plentiful. But you can sort of see it working. Here I have the database. Uh, it's referring to a database file, because that's what SQLite databases are, that or in memory. Um, I've got the URL, so it points directly to the path of the file. I'm going to press test connection, does a quick check. And you can see here, yes, with the green tick, yep, the connection worked. You can see here the version of the database, some settings, the driver that it's using, and that the ping took 50 seconds. If we look in options, I haven't set anything. SSH, again, I haven't set anything because it's on the local file system, so it's not relevant in this case. Perhaps I might have been using an SSH tunnel, but I'm not. Um, we can see, in this case, some, some schema details. I think if we... Oh, actually, nothing changes there. That's interesting. Ah, oh, okay, so you could um, choose the schema that you wanted to work with. That's not going to let me change that for the moment. Actually, I'm going to apply that. Click OK. <laughs> ah, that's annoying. So I'm going to just take that back out. Where do we go? This is also handy because it shows you how to remove a connection, which is just right click and click remove and then click OK. But when you add it, you see that they continue to pop up in the list. Now, what schema do I have? Just the main schema. OK, so I'm going to right click and now we'll see how to edit a schema or edit a configuration. Sorry. Right click and then where is it there? I believe it's properties. Yep, that's the one. We'll go over to schema again and I just want the uh, I just want the main schema. You can see the pattern in there as well. Advanced, do I have anything? No, I, I, these things weren't really relevant for me, mainly because this is purely for developmental purposes of an application that I'm in the early stages of. So I don't have to send any of these values, but handy to know that they're there should you need to. Click apply and note that the synchronization is happening here in the background. Click OK. And I don't think that's actually going to change, but I guess it's handy to know. Maybe I should have started this video with something a little bit more um, feature rich, such as MySQL or PostgreSQL. Anyway, with that done, assuming this was the first time, then you would see your schema up here, uh, specific to your particular vendor. If I collapse those there, you can see here, this is my main schema and I have several tables. Here's the internal sequence and master table. Sorry, hats off to SQLite. I'm not a SQLite guru, so I'm not totally au fait of the SQLite master table. I think that's like a metadata repository for that database. The sequence contains uh, a list of sequences that are generated for, for use throughout the various tables. If you want to have a bit of a look, you can see here that I have an address, a table called addresses. It has, what do we have? Six columns. The ID column is the primary key and it's also an auto increment, hence the SQLite sequence table. You can see there most of the fields or columns are all text columns with one being an integer. And if we have a look at the others, you can see that largely they follow that sort of similar pattern. As I said, it's just a generic database. Nothing to flash, at least at this point, but it's helping me develop the app. Um, yeah, that's roughly what you would see. If we wanted to go to run a query, we could press this button here and then say a new console and start writing a query. I've got a video on that already on how the IntelliSense technology helps you write queries quite quickly, depending on the proficiency of your SQL skills. What else do we have? Yeah, we could change the properties, I guess, right from there. I didn't think of that before. You could refresh it refresh the connection. Uh, you could duplicate an existing schema. And what do we have over here? Source editor. Whoa, didn't expect that at all. Ah, oh, that was from one of the queries I was working on just the other day. And that's all for this video. In another one, I will go into doing some database design and schema creation and editing and deletion. But for this video, I hope that you liked it. I hope that you got a lot out of it. And if you did, please 
consider giving it a thumbs up. If you like the video and you would like to see more like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I would love to hear your feedback, your thoughts, your feelings about the content in the video about the database tool in PHP Storm in the comments for this video. Oh yeah, one last thing. Uh, as always, I will include links, um, notes and so forth to everything that I've covered here in the notes for this video. And as always, my mate, I will see you in a future software development with Matt video. I'll catch you then.